In this bass lesson, I want to show you a super sweet exercise that uses the pentatonic scale, but it's more than just an exercise. You can use it to improvise, to make fills, or even write original bass lines. Hi, I'm Luke from Become a Bassist. Let's get into it. <laughs> Welcome to Become a Bassist, where it's all about insanely practical, no BS bass lessons designed to get you playing better bass, having more fun, and as always, becoming the best bassist you can be. And let's just dive right into this exercise because it is a proper belter. Now you may have seen uh, this kind of exercise with your quote unquote regular scales, where you play everything in thirds. So say you're playing a C minor scale. Yeah, but you'd play it in thirds. So you'd start here, skip one note, then go back to the one you skipped, and then just keep doing that. Until you've gone through the whole scale. Now we're actually gonna use the exact same idea, but instead of using a regular scale with uh, seven notes, we're gonna use a five note scale, the pentatonic scale. Let's use our C minor pentatonic scale to start off with. And in case you need a quick refresher, it's gonna look like this. We've got C, E flat, F, G, B flat, and C. Plus you've got an extra E flat and F at the top as well. So eighth and 11th fret on the E string, and then eighth and 10th frets on your A, D, and G string right there. So instead of, uh, let's use that idea we had uh, from before. So instead of playing, you know, just straight up and down the scale, what if we use the idea of playing one note, then skipping, then going back to the one you skipped, you'd end up with something like this. You'd play the C, you'd skip the E flat and go to the F, then back down to the E flat, then G, F, B flat, G, C, B flat, E flat, then C, and then F, and then I guess you'd end the whole thing on that E flat right there. So that's the idea, that's the kind of basic premise we're working with. Oh, pardon me. Yeah? Now it's probably a touch trickier than just doing the regular major or minor scale because you end up doing a lot of string crossing, staying on the same fret, you know, basically playing in fourths. Which, you know, can be... Oh! A little bit dicey if you don't do a lot of it, and it's not that common. Have a listen to the sound of it though. Yeah, it's a little bit different from the regular scale exercise. It's a little bit jumpier. It natural, naturally has this kind of different contour to it, a different shape, and that's thanks to those fourths, which is really cool. It means if you use this idea, it's probably gonna stand out a little bit more because it's got that certain flavor. You can also do the descending version. That's super cool too. Same idea in reverse. Now the really cool part of this though, is when you get to know how to do this with all five positions of the pentatonic scale, not just your you know, stale old root position. So you could go to your second position and play the same kind of idea. You could go to the third position. Uh, you could go to the fourth position. I'd probably go down here for the fourth position. And finally, your fifth position. Yeah, and then you're kind of back to the root there. Now, if you don't know all these positions yet, that's totally fine. I cover all this in great detail in my pentatonic sh uh, cheat sheet, so you can kind of hack the pentatonic scale, and you can get it from the link in the description. It's all free. When you have this under your fingers, though, you can start to use this idea for all kinds of very musical things, right? First of all, you, may want, you might want to play some fills, right? So let's bring a drum groove in. It's going to sound like this. Three, four. So let's play some fills just using the C minor pentatonic scale and skipping around. Let's go again. Things like that. It doesn't have to be super complicated, but you're using that kind of idea of, of kind of jumping around the pentatonic scale like that it can be really, really fun. Let's try using uh, one of the other positions rather than just this kind of home base one, uh, for example. So let's move up to our second uh, position for our fill and then move back down to our home base to you know resolve the, the phrase. So, two, three, four. Thank you. 
Here we go. Something like that works. Let's try a descending one. Oh, a little bit late. Coming back. But that's the idea, right? Like I said, these ones are a little bit trickier because you have to make your way back down low and hit it at the right time. Now you can use all the other positions of your pentatonic scale to do this kind of thing. Uh, it works really, really well. You just have to make sure that if you do do that, the do do, <laughs> you have to end up, you know, resolving the phrase on beat one, preferably, and hopefully on, you know, the right note, the root of the, you know, whatever chord you're aiming for. But the other thing you can do with this kind of exercise is throw it in while you're improvising. It's actually a great tool to build a bit of tension, maybe get a bit busier in your bass solos. So let's try doing a bit of that. Let's try improvising just however we like, and then deliberately at some point we're going to try and add in uh, this kind of idea that, you know, we're kind of going a bit like that. So let's bring the drum track back. Three, four. So we got... Let's chuck it in here. Yeah? So, it has a bit of a different flavor to it, right? But how cool does it sound? Uh, see what I mean about the contour of the line kind of jumping out? Instead of kind of going... Oh, pardon me. We're getting... That kind of thing. It really kind of makes things interesting, builds a bit of tension, a little bit of excitement, and it's all from, you know, a simple pentatonic exercise. Let's do a little bit more. Two, three, four. Let's chuck it in here. how it kind of goes from being quote unquote regular, more kind of scalish improvising to having that that kind of different contour in the line. Uh, let's try uh, let's try one more and see if we can add in some uh, descending stuff. Away. But do you see how uh, how cool this sounds? We're kind of going between the more like kind of scalar improvising, and then all every once in a while we get the and it really changes the contour and it kind of jumps out at you. It kind of makes things really interesting, builds a bit of tension, builds a bit of excitement, uh, and that's all from just a simple pentatonic exercise. So hopefully you see that while this is an exercise, you can make it, you know, to create some really cool stuff once you know how it works and how it all fits together all over your bass. But that can only really happen uh, if you know your five positions of the major pentatonic scale or minor pentatonic scale really well on your bass. And if you do need a bit of help with that, uh, I've got a great free resource that shows you all your pentatonic shapes, uh, how to get through them, how to memorize them and string them all together. Uh, so you're actually making music rather than just playing an exercise. It's all completely free as well. Just click the link in the description or click right here, fill out the form on that page. Once you're in, you'll be making some super sweet fills, bass lines and solos in no time at all. So I will see you in there.